goalkeeper Jimmy Glass is coming up for this corner kick. The last few seconds, this is Glass, and he's done it! Carlisle's keeper kicked Scarborough into the conference last season. Who would be the victors and the vanquished in 99-2000? Carlisle were contenders again, third bottom at the start of play. Chester were level on points, but below them on goal difference. There's two goals worse off, they could all turn round. And Shrewsbury started bottom, 92nd in the Football League. If they could survive, it really would be a great escape. Managers, fans, directors and players all knew which formula would work in their favour. Carlisle and Chester knew that a win would definitely see them safe. Shrewsbury had to win and hope that one of the others didn't. The Shrews were at Exeter. The manager Kevin Ratcliffe knew that matches elsewhere would determine his team's fate. At Brighton, Carlisle were under the cosh. Keeper Peter King was in for a busy afternoon. His boss, Martin Wilkinson, walked the line, as if walking the plank. At Exeter, Shrewsbury had to score. The chances went begging, and Kevin Ratcliffe was praying for a goal. Simon Sturridge was on target, but kept out. The fans were on tenterhooks, but kept singing. At the Diva Stadium, Chester were hanging on. On the half hour, Peterborough hit the post. Chester manager Ian Atkins was happy to take all the luck going. Then back at Brighton, the deadlock was broken. Andy Crosby with the opener at Withdean. One more for Brighton, Carlisle could now be caught. Brighton's goal sent waves round St James Park. Radio signals conveyed the news to the Shrewsbury fans. The manager's signals went out to the players. Brighton was still beating Carlisle, but it could prove to be academic. United was still safe, so long as Shrewsbury didn't win. The Carlisle fans were keeping their spirits up. Their keeper kept them in the game. Goal difference, remember, was close. At Exeter, Rats Shrews were making pests of themselves, but they couldn't find a way past homekeeper Danny Potter. The manager was preparing his half-time team talk. Still no goals at the Diva Stadium. Chester had chances, which they failed to convert. But with Carlisle losing, they were looking safe. At half-time, just one goal in the three games. Carlisle were one down, but Shrewsbury would be going down. They had 45 minutes to save 50 years of league football. An early second half goal would calm the nerves, but Exeter kept them on the edge. Perhaps it wasn't going to be Shrewsbury's day. Fresh legs were called for a tactical substitution. Mickey Brown is the fans' favourite. They've been calling for him to come off the bench, and he soon made his mark. Brown had been on the pitch for 33 seconds when he put the keeper under pressure and Danny Potter put the ball into his own net. Shrewsbury were 1-0 up and were off the bottom with half an hour to go. At Brighton, the Carlisle fans heard the news. If it stayed the same, then United would be going down and there was no Jimmy Glass to save them. Back at Chester, 61 minutes gone, Chester on the attack. If they could nick a goal, they could forget about relegation. Carl Hayes wasn't close enough. Carl Arles had barely had a chance at Brighton. If they conceded a second, they'd be down and out. A desperate goal line clearance kept them in the game. At the same time, Shrewsbury was seizing their chance. The second goal, Mickey Brown the hero, 2-0. As it stood, they were safe. Carlisle 
best hope now was for Chester to lose. And three minutes later, Peterborough obliged. Richie Hanlon on the score sheet. Chester were on the ropes. last season would the United fans be in their debt again goal difference has now lifted Carlisle off the bottom but there were still 24 minutes left and frustration was beginning to show Richard Prokes was sent off could Carlisle hang on with 10 men Chester had three ways to survive Carlisle could concede two more Exeter could score two against Shrewsbury or they had to score themselves Tony Hemming's free kick was just one. But the Exeter option was back on. The Grecians got one back. Gary Alexander's goal. 2-1 to Shrewsbury now. It was Alexander's 19th goal of the season. If he could make it 20, then Shrewsbury would be back on the bottom. The Shrews were six minutes from safety. Mickey Brown almost regained the two-goal lead from close range, but a close finish was in store. Four minutes to go now, the whole season was going right to the wire. A late penalty appeal by Exeter was waved away by the referee. No chances was the instruction from the bench. It was all down to Chester now. They had two minutes to save themselves. A single goal, a single point would see them safe. But Peterborough's crossbar came to Shrewsbury's rescue. The Chester fans, though, were desperate for some good news. And reports of an Exeter equaliser swept the ground. Everybody seemed to think that the scores were level at St James's Park. If it really was 2-2 at St James, then Chester would be okay. But they were wrong. And the Shrewsbury fans were still celebrating. They were still 2-1 up with a minute to play. Chester were the first to finish. 1-0 to Peterborough. Now they had to wait and pray. The next whistle was at Wisting. Carlisle's ten men had held on. They'd lost one nil at Brighton, but goal difference meant they were safe. Only Exeter could save Chester now. But it wasn't to be full time, Exeter the one, Shrewsbury two. But escape relegation on a day of tension, twists and turns. Kevin Ratcliffe had started the season in charge of Chester. Now he sent them down. Kevin, congratulations. What an afternoon.
Chester on Monday, an eight-hour Football League tribunal ruled that the club must pay Kevin Ratcliffe £200,000 in compensation. Two managers later, Chester are counting the cost of relegation. It was difficult coming in the situation that the club was in, or the, the, the playing side was in, uh, and you've done your best with limited resources. Um, as a manager, you can't do any more than that. And as I I'm not the players. I feel for the players and the supporters. It's a lovely club. Um, but life goes on. And yeah, they'll be playing confident football next year. It's, it's not impossible to get straight back. And we build the club again, like many other clubs have done. Again, I mean, he did, did it last year for us at uh, Scarborough, uh, and he's done it again for us uh, today. Uh, so, again, I've heard that said so many times that we don't need this situation next year. I just hope that's going to be true this time. I think nobody, for this last three years, when he got relegated from the second, hung on as he did last season as well, and did it again this season. He just can't keep happening. I've done my best, and I've enjoyed every single minute of it. It's now time for someone else. Uh, that was my last game. And that's me finished. But uh, I'd like to pay a personal tribute and a thank you to everyone who's been involved. It's a great football club and a great team. So, thanks very much. So, after 69 years, Chester City lose their place in the Football League. It all came down to goal difference. And for the second season in a row, Carlisle survived by the skin of their teeth. Shrewsbury climbed two places on the last day. At the top, Swansea, Rotherham and Northampton go up and there'll be plenty of rivalry in the playoffs. Darlington against Hartlepool in the northeast, and Peterborough against Barnett with both managers Barry Fry and John Steele up against their old clubs. Finally, Kidderminster have bid farewell to non-league football. The champions received the trophy last week. Nine points was their final winning margin. Convincing in the nationwide conference, now Jan Mulvey's side aim to light up the football league.